And so I'll tell you the story about that song in just a minute, but it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. And just a couple of uh, housekeeping reminders. So don't forget to call Steve Chicago about the steak uh, donations. Let's move on that as quickly as we can so he can get that all together. And then don't forget to keep your holiday card packet. It has everything you need in it for the Advent season. And I wanted to just mention the gratitude circle that we had last uh, Tuesday at Donna Twaltrich's home. It was wonderful. Uh, just a, a delightful time. And uh, we shared gratitude around a fire pit. And there was a, about, I don't know, 13 or 14 of us there, I think. And people were coming in and out and gosh, and, and Sue Barton came in with bread and some of the best cheese. And we had hot apple cider. So it was a fun time. Thank you, Donna. Thank you so much for sharing that with the ministry this in this way. Thank you. Well, as you can tell by my using the word uh, awesome today, I was moved last week, for those of you who were here, with Michael, Bo Michael Gott's talk for Thanksgiving, when he said, anybody who's not in awe at this human experience is just missing something. It's just missing something. And, you know, I was caught by that about the awesome awesomeness of the human experience. So the song talks about the awesomeness of the human experience, about even in the falling rain, let the sun shine in. And so I want to invite us this Advent season to walk down the sunlit, sunlit way, to invite the sunshine in, even if the rain is falling, not just in the Advent season, but every day to see the awesomeness of this human experience. Yesterday, as most of you know, I usher, well, you didn't know I was ushering yesterday, but I do usher at the Lesher Center. And so on, uh, it started, the Nutcracker started, and of course, there are 75 performances by the Contra Costa Ballet this year at the Lesher Center. And uh, they started on Friday, and I was at the one o'clock performance, because if you usher, you've got to do a bunch of Nutcrackers in the Christmas story. It's just, you accept that commitment as an usher, because there are so many. And the first one on Friday, we were about a half hour out, about to open the doors and the power went out. So we didn't get to do the show, but they did the four o'clock show. So I was back yesterday and I want to tell you, you want to see awe. There were some little ones there that were in awe at the Nutcracker. Oh my God goodness it was they were dressed up and they were ready to be in ballet and there were flowers everywhere for the performers and as an adult seeing the nutcracker for the 742nd time it was my favorite nutcracker ever this nutcracker was one hour can you believe it no intermission and it was one after another why I got to tell you, it was a good nutcracker. We all came out singing and we were all in awe. And so it's that awesomeness, that awe that I, I want to invite you into for this Advent season. And you know, what is Advent all about? Well, most Christians focus on hope during the first weeks of Advent and in unity, and perhaps, and, and Reverend Kurt Condra wrote this several years ago in, in the Christmas uh, booklet. Kurt says, perhaps uh, it's a, a little, 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 in unity, perhaps inspired by the view that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, we contemplate both hope and faith as we spiritually prepare our hearts and minds for Christmas. Kurt says that there... Well, think of it as a hope-faith continuum. Hope arises when we glimpse a new possibility. These glimpses can inspire us to make positive changes. They can motivate us to adopt new ways of thinking and believing. So Kurt says, to increase your hope on this continuum, enter into the realm of belief. We believe because we have an intellectual understanding of how a thing works. And we may also believe because it's what we've been taught. The challenge is that it's possible 
to have two contradictory beliefs concurrently. We may have been taught one thing and we may have intellectually decided something else. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome that in this human experience, we could have two contradictory beliefs and move through that awesomely? Well, you know, let me tell you that this song came into being uh, at the uh, at the men's prosperity meeting. My slides went askew. Sorry, my notes. Uh, I got ahead of myself. Can you believe that? So I was <laughs> at the men's prosperity consciousness team meeting last week. And David uh, Morse was leading the meeting and he said, well, did anybody read the daily word today? And I got so excited because I had led the meditation that day and we had, and Marilyn had read it and the daily word was weave. And I got really excited about it. And I, I always like to have a little music when I do the new meditation before we start. And I was looking for songs about weave other than weave. And Weave in the Sunshine came up and it was, I said, oh, this is what we need to do for Advent. So, and then to go to the men's prosperity uh, consciousness team, we must be prosperously conscious because we're all thinking alike. And we talked about that. And, and, and one of the essences of what that daily word said was, no matter how my story unfolds, I am creating meaning for what happens in my life. I take the elements of my past and present and weave a pattern that leads me to a brilliant future of love, possibility, gratitude, and joy. So no matter how my story unfolds, no matter how this human experience unfolds for me, I, I'm divine and I bring elements of things that have happened in the past and things that are happening in the present. And I weave a pattern that leads me to a brilliant future of love, possibility, gratitude, and joy. Just think about that. Think about that. I thought to myself, this is what I'm thinking for Advent. Weave me the sunshine. Shine. Let my brilliant future shine bright. So as we move through refreshing, renewing the Christ within us this Advent, let your brilliant future shine, shine bright in all the decisions you make, even if you've got contradictory beliefs about them. You have the spiritual understanding, the spiritual intellect, all the gifts that you need to move forward in faith to make the right decision to choose the right thing. And no matter what it is you choose, brilliant things can still unfold, no matter what you choose. So I was, uh, so here I was two weeks ago. Well, I got to back up before that. Right before we, <laughs> right before we went to Unity Village, which is a while ago now, hard to believe, I took my car into the shop. The power steering had a problem. I knew it and I, I, I denied it for as long as I could. Well, then I had to face reality and I took it into the shop and oh, he said, there's quite a few things going on in your uh, 18 year old car. And uh, why don't you leave it here while you go to Unity Village and we'll see what we're gonna fix. And while I was there, they called and said it was $3,500 to fix it. Well. Now, bear in mind that the blue book value for this car is $4,000. So I had to stop and think, and boy, I was having a lot of conflicting ideas going on, a lot of conflicting beliefs going on. I love this car. I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want a car payment. Well, cars only last so long, blah, 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 blah. I said, fix it. Put the $3,500. I'll fix it. It'll last me for another five years. I've replaced everything in this car. They fixed it. I picked it up. 
drove around for about four days, stepped on the brake and it went to the floor. Oh, but I puffed it, thank you God, it came back up. And so we got the brake, but we ended up back at the Ford dealer and the service man said to me, you know, I don't think I'm gonna sign your car in today. I think we've decided not to service your car anymore. You've put enough money into it. We don't want to service it anymore. Buy a new one, buy a used one. I said, you're kidding me. He said, no, I'm not. When are you going to give up on this thing? I said, he said, let me, I'm going to do a free diagnostic on it. Let's see what it says. Well, he always does a free diagnostic. So it was no big deal. But I said, thank you. I'm grateful. Called me up. Well, it's this, that, and the other, and this, that, and the other, and one of the parts that's obsolete, $2,600. Well, let me backtrack on this story now for a minute, because here I am at a, well, at a turning point, right? Here I am at a decision, I've got more than two conflicting views, and and I was in denial, and I'm not sure if I'm still out of it, if I'm out of it or yet, yet or not. And so I have to tell you that I knew this car was getting, car was getting older. The guy across the hall from me that helps me with financial planning even said to me about six years ago, that car is getting old. When shall we put another one in the budget? And I said, we're not. We're not putting any new car in the budget. This is the last car I'm going to have. And when it wears out, it wears out and I'm done. Well, I've been saying that for six years now. Well, that's in my mind. Let me tell you, it's a belief. And so I had to make a decision about whether I was going to keep that car or whether I was going to get another car or whether I was going to do what I said I was going to do and have been prophesying that I was going to do for the last six years, I was going to be carless. Well, I went through, you know, I told him I'd call him back on Friday, but he didn't call me and I didn't call him. And the weekend, he was too busy to call. So I got to ponder and think and ponder and think and Forget about the awesomeness of this human experience and forget about this and forget about that. And I finally made a decision that I had to get rid of the car. And what was I going to do with it? Well, the only thing to do with it was to donate it. Well, who am I going to donate it to? Blah, 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 blah. And so I went online to look at easy because, you know, there's well, you it's an you can get yourself. I mean, there are a lot of scams out there in car, car donations. So be careful if you decide to donate a car. But I chose to make a wish foundation. Good, good foundation. I've donated them before. And in hospice, we dealt with them a lot. So I came in, I went in, and you can do it all online. And I filled it in, and it came time to push the enter button. And I got up out of my seat and went home. I don't want to get rid of my car. What's going on here? I'll have to. What am I going to do without a car? How do I get to the grocery store? Am I going to get a bike? Will I walk here? How are my legs? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm walking out and I walked out onto my patio. And it was a bright, beautiful day and the sun was shining. And the leaves were falling and the awesomeness of this world popped right back into my mind. And I said, what are you doing? Why are you putting yourself through this? Walk out of the falling rain, let in the sunshine, walk the sunlit way. You've already thought about this. Everything's gonna be fine. And I walked back in, hit the enter button and off it went picked up the phone, called the car dealer, told him Make-A-Wish Foundation was going to be coming on Monday of this week, and it was all done. And gosh, I felt good. Gosh, I felt good. One of my favorite Unity books and one of my favorite Unity ministers is Reverend Ernest C. Wilson. In 1958, he published 
the Unity book, The Sunlit Way. It was written by Reverend Ernest C. Wilson and published by Unity School of Christianity in 1928. It's the sweetest little book, and Reverend Ernest Wilson is dear to my heart. It, he was ordained in 1915. And uh, I have to be honest and say, he's a gay man. He was a gay man. He had a partner and for, founded a church in Los Angeles. And in the 50s or in the 40s, uh, early 40s, when the Fillmore's, Cora and Charles uh, went traveling, they visited Ernest and his partner in Los Angeles. And I just love that part of the story. It's special to me because no matter what was going on in unity, there was, Char there was Charles there with Cora holding on to principle and honoring the work that this man did. And in the for forward of the book, The Sunlit Way, the writer of the forward writes this, The Sunlit Way as a book has been in preparation for several years ever since a memorable, su memorable summer's day when the author stood looking down a long highway lined with California eucalyptus trees. The sun was setting at the very end of the road, it seemed, and its bright radiance was reflected on the gleaming surface of the much used highway, a road of sunlight leading straight into the glory of the sunlit uh, itself the sunlit way. And so it was after that, that the sunlit way was written in over a period of time by Ernest C. Wil Wilson, who was born in Fargo, North Dakota and ordained in 16, 1916. He was known internationally as a lecturer, writer, and a leader. His ministry began in San Diego. He was all over the place, including being the head of the uh, Society for Silent Unity in the 30s back in Kansas City. And then in 1939, Ernest fathered the unity work on the West Coast by, finding, by founding Christ Church Unity in Los Angeles. He returned to Kansas City once again, and in 1965 served, and some of you who were on our trip to Unity Village will remember this, served the Plaza Church until his retirement in 1976. During his tenure of service to Unity, he wrote 17 books, compiled many poems and articles, introduced the master, cla master class lessons in 1932. He originated Unity's Christmas candle lighting and Easter flower service. And even with all this, he spoke daily on radio and became a celebrated television pioneer. So I want to share a little bit from the Sunlit Way with you because it's got such good advice in it. And if you want to find the Sunlit Way, of course, it's out of publication now, but you can go to Reverend Mark Hicks's site, truthunity.net, and look up Ernest Wilson, and you'll see a PDF version of the Sunlit Way. It's just so much fun to be able to have it in, in its entirety and you can download it. And you can enjoy such chapters, small short chapters as the new heaven and the new earth, the truth that heals, concentration, creative thought, desire and vision, faith and true substance. And it includes both a prosperity and a healing treatment. So I pulled out some excerpts from Faith and Substance because we're talking about faith and hope. So Ernest Wilson says this, do you seek health? Would you demonstrate riches? Do you desire success in all things? Then when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Belief is your contribution to the science of prayer. Gotta say it one more time, it's the key. Belief is your contribution to the science of prayer. Paul told the Hebrews that faith is the substance of things hoped for. What you believe in, that you become, 
I'm sorry. Paul, <laughs> I am doing so good today. Paul told the Hebrews that faith is the substance of things hoped for. What you believe in, you become. Belief in failure begets failure. Belief in evil begets evil. Belief in good begets good. Belief in truth begets truth. Where do our beliefs come from? What do you believe? Where did your beliefs come from? Where did my beliefs come from? Where did they come from? And where do they come from now? What my beliefs, I believe, and Larry Schneider talks about this in his Metanoia class, they come from our core values. What are our core values? What are your core values? What are the core values that you're bringing with you in this human experience? And what do you believe in? I want to invite you to think about your beliefs, any contradictory beliefs you have, and where the truth in, in, is in those beliefs. And bring them with you down the sunlit way, this advent. Start with our beliefs. Let's look in our beliefs. Faith may not express in the same way for, all, for us all, but everyone has faith in something. Faith may not express the same way for us all, but everyone, everyone has faith in something. We may be so negative in expression that our faith is difficult to discover, but if it manifests in no other way, we may find it in our fears. We may have so much difficulty expressing faith that if it manifests, because it will manifest, we all have faith in something. If it manifests in no other ways, it will manifest in our fears. Faith, fearful people are faithful people of a kind, for it would be impossible, it would be impossible to fear anything in which one has no faith. Now think about that. It would be impossible to fear anything in which one has no faith. Faith is a tremendous force. It will accomplish marvels. What are you holding your faith in? Where are you putting your faith? Are you putting your faith in your fear? Or are you putting your faith in your truth? If we're going to walk down this sunlit way together this Advent, we need to put our faith in our truth. Remove it from our fears. We need to begin to express our faith. To be expressive and powerful in our faith from that power center. The unhappiness of the world is largely due, and this is from Ernest Wilson, the unhappiness of the world is largely due to misdirected faith. Faith in material things instead of faith in that which produces them. We do not ordinarily have faith in new things and in strange things. Our faith in these things must be developed through acquaintance with them. So it is with truth. When we first hear truth, it's new to us if we've not heard it before. If we've been taught misdirected or misguided things, things that are not truth, fears, and as we're realizing truth, there's, it's strange to us. And we have to let our faith be developed through acquaintance with it. If you would acquire the faith that demonstrates, in other words, if you want the faith, if you're going to acquire the faith that demonstrates, study the evidence for it. What did, what did you bring that faith to? What did you imagine? What was the hope? What was the belief? What was the glimpse that you saw and that you demonstrated faith to? Study the evidence of that. How did it happen? What did you apply? 
What did it bring? What didn't it bring that you wanted? What did it bring that you didn't want? Associate yourself with others who have found faith helpful. Associate yourself with others that have found truth the way. Associate yourself with others who have found and are seeking the sunlit way. Read about truth. Think it. Speak it. Live it. It is far more deserving of your faith than the things from which you have probably already captured your confidence. Devote to it even a small amount of attention, and it will repay you many fold. So devote just a small amount of attention to it, and it will repay you many fold. Even if you're still paying attention to those other things, just by giving it a small amount of attention, it will repay you many fold. Few persons have been able to do the wonderful things that the stories tell us that Jesus, Christ, Jesus the Christ did, because few persons have developed and directed their faith as he did his. His whole life was devoted to faith, the assurance of things hoped for. He spent long periods in prayer and meditation. Are you spending enough time in prayer and meditation? He had learned to unify his thought forces with those of spirit. What did he do? He learned to unify his human experiences and his divinity with those of spirit and brought them into one. And his faith was absolute. I'm not asking you to have absolute faith, but think about it. Think about having absolute faith as you walk down this sunlit way. See the awesomeness in this human experience. Have faith in it. In the Advent booklet for this year, Reverend David Brian Adams writes this in A Christmas of Peace and Light. I invite you to enter this Advent season with the hope, faith, and wonder of a child. Fill your heart and mind with excitement as you consider the spiritual gifts that are yours for the asking. Establish your faith in the expectancy of good being poured out upon you. Consider all the ways you might radiate the good gifts out into the world. Make room in your life for the rebirth of Christ within you. And rest assured, beloved one, that, that you truly have received the most prized gift of all. Beloved one, rest assured, beloved one, will you walk down the sunlit way with me this Advent? Beloved one, thank you for being here this morning.